Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Sit back, relax, stay safe, stay sinful. Enjoy, my friends. Story number one. I'm a 14-year-old male and I live in a very isolated area. I joined a gym a few months ago, and since it's a walkable distance, I used to walk up my way to the gym and return in public transport rickshaw. These vehicles are pretty compact and congested, with a set of two seating rows in front of each other. My session ended at around 8 in the evening, so it was very dark outside. I got into a rickshaw and told the driver where I needed to be dropped. When the auto started, I realized that this very creepy looking man with dark circles under his red eyes is staring at me with an expressionless face. I shrug it off since these type of people are fairly common in my area. A few moments go by and the driver asks where I needed to get off, as he had forgotten. I tell him again and this creepy guy says that he too will get off there. I started to get a bit creeped out but still didn't think much of it in the moment. I got off of my spot along with the creepy man, paid the driver and started walking to the street that led into my neighborhood. I glance behind and see that this guy is following me, the creepiest part that he was walking in an extremely dead manner. I was getting scared at this point, but felt relieved when I saw that there was a wedding taking place on my way home. It's an Indian wedding so needless to say it was very loud and bright. I thought he might go away now, but he didn't. He kept following me. As I passed the marriage lawn, it again became extremely quiet and dark since the area I live in is very empty and there are no street lights around. The man is still following me. I thought to myself that maybe he lived around here, so there is a chance that he is not following me, but still I was scared enough to walk faster. When I was three minutes away from my home, I saw that I was no longer being followed, so I assumed he wasn't actually following me. Just when I reached the street my house was on, I saw him running towards me. I was scared shitless so I started running as fast as I could to my house, started ringing the bell. I looked to my side to see that he was just standing there like a statue, staring at me. Just as I was about to scream, my sister opened the gate and I went inside, locked the door. I told her what happened. We both got on the roof of the house to see where he was. We saw him walking away into the darkness. I left for the gym early the next day and came back before dark. This was the scariest experience I've ever had regardless of how anticlimactic it was. Story number two. When I was six years old, my parents divorced. My dad was soon given full custody as my mom is an alcoholic and racked up a few DUIs. Anyway, me, my younger sister, and my dad moved to a new neighborhood and we transferred to the nearby elementary school. The school was very close to my house, maybe five to seven or so blocks away, close enough to walk, but my sister and I, also a girl, were too young to walk alone. Sometimes our dad would walk us to school in the morning and then walk back. Less commonly, he would walk to pick us up. My dad usually would pick us up in his black Mazda. The way the pickups worked at my school was very common. We went out with our class, stood by our teacher and classmates, and when a car pulled up, designated staff members would ask who the student was that they were picking up. They would then go find them with their class and escort them to the correct car. Seeing as my mom was in jail at this time, the only person who would ever pick us up was my dad. One day I was in third grade and my sister was in first. We were outside waiting to be picked up. After being outside for only a few minutes, my little sister came over to me. She said someone who isn't dad was in a car to pick us up. He said both of our names and they found her first. She said he smiled at her and told her dad had told him to pick us up this afternoon. But she said she wanted to find me first before she got in the car, since she didn't recognize him. Thank God my sister did that. Our dad had always told us not to talk to strangers, so I grabbed my teacher and told her what happened. 
She got a very alarmed look on her face and told us to stay where we were while she told another teacher. Our dad arrived to pick us up a few minutes later and we got home safely. We told him about it and we all had a long talk about safety protocol. He asked my sister to describe the man in the car. He called the police and gave them the best description he could, although my sister was very young and wasn't very focused on the details. A few weeks later it happened again, but this time he said my name. My dad had given the school the same info he'd given the police, but presumably he had multiple vehicles because my sister said he'd been in a red car and this one was black, similar to dad's. I saw the black car and ran up to it, but quickly I caught a glimpse of the face before I opened the door and hopped in. He was a middle-aged man, really pale with a really angular face. We made eye contact and his mouth was smiling, but his eyes looked really wrong to me, squinty and almost angry. I turned back towards the carpool assistant who delivered me to the car to alert her, but by the time I did the car was gone, and I couldn't give many details. My dad contacted the police again, but without a license plate they weren't able to do much. The last time I saw him wasn't until months later, near the end of the school year. I was walking home with a big group of kids that lived in my neighborhood, and he drove by us and slowed the car down to try and talk. I recognized his face immediately and alerted the other kids to run. Luckily we were only about three houses down from where one of my friends lived. We all piled into her house, concerned her parents significantly as we explained the situation. I never saw him again after that. My dad started dating my now stepmom, and we moved to her neighborhood and switched schools shortly after. I still think about him occasionally though. His face was actually in my dream a few nights ago, which reminded me to write about my experience. To this day I don't know how he knew my name how he knew anything about us, really. Very fucking scary to think about what would have happened to my tiny little sister if she had gotten in that car with that man and what might have happened to me if I had. To my childhood predator, please, please let's not meet again. Story number three. Anyways, it was late at night and I was sneaking out of my girlfriend's house with her to go somewhere with our friend. Me and my girlfriend waited across the street on some church stairs, waiting for our friend to pick us up. We were just chatting about our plans for the night and whatnot, when we noticed some guy walk to her neighbor's car, and we started paying attention to the man as his whole demeanor was strange. He looked inside the car, walked across the street, and then, not sure if he noticed us at this point, crouched and hid by a tree when a car drove by. We didn't know what he was doing at the time, but he was hiding so the passing car didn't notice him. As the car leaves, he gets up and continues down the street looking into cars. At this point, I'm texting our friend asking if he could hurry, and he says he's having some trouble sneaking the car out of his house without his parents knowing. This is when the man crosses the street to the side where me and my girlfriend are waiting. He clearly doesn't notice us sitting under the stairs under a light. He goes up to a car and opens a trunk of it, he crawls right inside and closes it back up. The car was an SUV type car. He's doing God knows what in that car for about five minutes. The whole car is slightly shaking. He gets out and starts walking down the street, where he finally notices me and my girlfriend sitting. He just looks at us, mumbles something under his breath, puts a fist out for a fist bump. I'm no stranger to weirdos, so I fist bump him, and he mumbles something again and just walks off. It looks like he had a little little kid's book bag on because it had some sort of graphics on it. Our friend came not even 30 seconds after that and we asked if he had seen a guy walking on the sidewalk. He said he didn't notice anyone. We think the guy was hiding from him as he drove by also. Anyways, that was that. I called the police just to make sure they knew and to have a patrol car out in case he comes back to the car. I'm not sure if he was ever caught. I will always wonder what you were up to, creepy guy who was able to silently close a trunk. Story number four. I'm a 16 year old female and I live with my mom in a very small house. 
Our rooms are separated and mine is located just beside the dining area, while hers was near the living room. Anyways, my room is also beside the back door that leads to a patio in our backyard, which is just right beside my room. Inside my room is an air conditioning hole that has not been repaired and it's just being covered by a flimsy ass plywood. If you were outside, you'd be able to lift this plywood and peek through my room from the patio. This information is important for the story, so just bear with me for a little while. Now, I've been noticing for the past few days that someone keeps on flashing flashlights on my window at 3 a.m. I've told my mother and the housekeeper about this, but they told me it's just a neighbor checking the chickens. They have chickens which are located near our backyard. Not at 3 a.m. you're not. But anyways, I shrugged it off and thought it might have been unintentional. I never really gave thought about it because I never really met this neighbor. We never had an actual interaction. One time though I was hanging my clothes on the backyard when I saw him just staring directly at me while smoking. Like he just sat on his backyard and stared at me. I got weirded out and I was home alone at the time. Fortunately, my mom arrived and I had to stop and help her bring in the groceries. After those events, nothing really happened much until today. I was watching military videos and live PD on my phone while I was lying on my bed. I suddenly heard the plywood move. I paused the video to see what was going on when someone suddenly lifted the plywood, stuck their hand in and opened their fucking flashlight. I froze for a second, unable to process the situation I was in. I snapped and screamed, what the fuck? Quickly opened my phone's flashlight. I pushed the plywood out and was expecting to see someone, but the person took off. I immediately turned on the lights and went into the kitchen to grab the largest knife we had. At this point, my heart was beating so fast I could my eardrums beating as well. I was cautious to open my back door, but I did anyways. I was holding the knife really hard and I knew I was going to get in real danger, this person decided to fuck with me for real. I stood there breathing heavily and all I saw was darkness. Till I saw that fucking neighbor walking with his flashlight, pretending to check on his chickens at 4am. He saw me and immediately went back into his house. I was breathing hard. I thought about barging into his house and killing him right on the spot, but I figured to just let the cops handle it. I'm still shook up about it, so fucking mad. It makes me wonder how many times had done that without me knowing. How many times he had spied on me. It makes my blood boil. It makes me fucking mad. Sure, I was scared, but my anger surpasses that. If he does that one more time, I will kill him myself. Creepy fucking neighbor. Let's never meet. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Email your true scary stories to the sinful savant at gmail.com. Till we meet again, stay sinful.